Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about an introduction to derivatives. And uh, to start talking about derivatives, what I want to do is I want to just look at a graph and uh, ask the big question. And this is one of the two maybe big questions that we answer in Calculus 1. The first big question of Calculus 1 is how do you find the slope on a curve? And then the second big question is how do you find the area under a curve? Okay, so this is the first big question of calculus. Uh, it's called the derivative or differentiation, but really it's a very simple question to state. And that is if I have a function and I have a point on that function, um, and let's say that this is x value a, so this is f of a. Uh, the question is, at that point, what is the slope? Okay, so if I were to draw a line right here that has the exact same slope at this point as the function does, uh, another way of asking the question is, what is the slope of that dotted line? Okay, so uh, that's the question that we're trying to answer right now, is what's the slope? And this has all sorts of applications because slope, as we talked about earlier in the course, uh, if this is some sort of a position function, then the slope is the speed or the velocity. It's the velocity. Uh, <coughs> The speed is the absolute value of the velocity, but this would be velocity, or it's the rate of change in lots of different scenarios. So this is an important question. What's the instantaneous rate of change of the function at A? All right, so this is an important mathematical question that we're answering here. And the question is, how do we answer it? Well, it's difficult. It's not an easy question to answer, and the reason why is I know how to find the slope of a line, right? If I know what the line is, the slope of the line is fairly easy to find, right? We know that it's what, the, uh, the rise over the run, some might say, or uh, delta y over delta x, you may have heard that before, uh, but, or it's, uh, we call that m, in the y equals mx plus b uh, formula. But how do we find the slope at this point? What I know about this point is just that it's on this curve. I don't have a second point on the line that I usually would need to calculate the slope of the line. I just have one point. And we know that one point is not enough to find slope. So what do we do? Well. I guess the answer is th that we cheat a little bit uh, and we don't actually calculate the slope of that line. We calculate the slope of something we can find. So let me redraw over here. And I just want to look at, so let's say we have a point here. And I say, okay, I want to find the slope of this line. And by the way, this dotted line that I drew right here that I'm trying to find the slope of, we call that line the tangent line. It's the line that has exactly the same slope as the curve at that point. All right, so we come over here and I'm trying to find that tangent line at a point and I can't. So what I do is I cheat just a little bit and let's say that this is my point A then I move over a little bit and I say, let's move over, how much am I going to move over? Let's move over H, okay? So I'm gonna move H off of A and then I'm going to look at that functional value, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll draw a line that goes through those two points Uh, and I'll use that as an estimate for the slope of my tangent line. Okay, Is it the same? No, it's not. Uh, this line that I just drew that goes through two points on the curve, we call this a secant line.
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this secant line and I'm going to let the secant line help me to estimate what the slope is of my tangent line. It's not perfect, but it's an estimate, okay? And so this guy, uh, at A, I have a functional value, f of A, and at A plus H, I have a functional value, f of A plus H. All right, so now I have two points on a line, and two points on a line help me to figure out slope. So the slope, I'm going to call it M, because that usually stands for slope, and I'll just put down here of my secant line. So the slope of the secant line in this case is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I call this my y2 and this is my y1, then I have its f of a plus h minus y1, which is my f of a, divided by x2, which is a plus h, minus x1, which is a. And if I simplify that a little bit, I get that this is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a all over the a and the minus a cancel, and I'm just left with h. Okay, so what I've just figured out is that this slope would be an estimate of the slope of this tangent line. Well, what if I wanted to make my estimate a little better? What I could do is I could take this point closer to this point. So instead of making a plus h right here, I could make it, let's say, right here instead. And then I would have something that looks more like this, which, um, which might be a little closer to my tangent line. And in fact, in this case, it is. And if I wanted it to be even closer, then move the point closer. In other words, as h gets small, the estimate gets better and better. Well, what if I took the limit as h went to zero? Uh, here's a great question. Can h just be zero? Would that be okay? Well, if h is 0, let's look at this. If h is 0, this is f of a minus f of a, which is 0, divided by 0. So 0 over 0, that's undefined. I can't let h be 0. It, th there's no meaning there, it's undefined. But if I just let h get very, very small, then everything's okay, as long as h is always positive. And remember, in the limit, as h goes to 0, h is never actually zero. It's just very close. So what I want to do to find the slope of the tangent line, I'm just going to take the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. All right? And this is what we call the slope of the tangent line. This is also called, the way we write this, is it's f prime at a. Or sometimes we call this the derivative of the function, this little symbol, we usually read it as prime, but I could say that this is uh, the derivative of f evaluated at a. In other words, the slope of the function f at the point a. So when I say f prime of a, what I'm saying is at a, not what is the functional value, but what is the slope at a. And how I calculate that slope is with this limit. Oftentimes we say that this is the limit of this guy, which I call the difference quotient. So f of a plus h minus f of a over h, that's called a difference quotient. And so the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient is the derivative at a. All right, so that's the basic concept of a derivative. And the only way that we can get a derivative 
is with a limit. Now, that's really kind of cool because sometimes in calculus people say, uh, why do we have to do these limit things? What, why do they really matter? Well, the answer is one of the biggest questions of calculus is what is the slope of a tangent line? That's one of the big questions we want to answer. And the answer to that question is how do I do it? I take a limit. So without limits, there is no derivative. Every derivative, derivative you'll ever take in this class is actually a limit, whether you like it or not. Now, we'll figure out some ways to make maybe life a little bit easier as we take derivatives, uh, and you'll see that as we go along. But at the end of the day, every derivative is a limit of a difference quotient. Okay, so that's a basic uh, intro for you into what is the derivative. And this is the derivative at A. The following definition tells us about what we call the derivative itself. And the derivative of a function f of x with respect to the variable x is the function f prime. Okay, so we read this f prime, we could also say the derivative of f, but this little symbol right here means take the derivative of that function or uh, we read it f prime whose value at x is, and this says f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, uh, provided that the limit exists. Now, we just did something exactly like this, and I just talked about the limit of a difference quotient, and that's exactly what this is. The only difference here is that instead of a's being in these two spots, we have x's. And what this is doing is, letting us take a bunch of derivatives all at the same time. Uh, so we're finding a bunch of slopes, in fact all of the slopes, at the same time for every value of x where the derivative exists. So instead of just taking finding one slope, I'm finding all of the slopes at once, and I'm writing this as a new function, and this new function is called f prime of x. So f prime of x is a function where I plug in a value for x and what pops out of the function is the slope of the function at x. Okay, f of x gives me the functional value at x. f prime of x gives me the slope of the function at x. So this is extremely valuable, and the way that I find this is I take the limit of a difference quotient. Now, notice that this is f prime of x, this is a function, and you should expect that the derivative of a function will be another function of x. So don't be surprised to see some x's show up in your answer when you find a derivative. A derivative is a function of x. Okay, so that's not surprising at all. By the way, there's some other notation that I should probably make you aware of as we go forward. And that is, there are just a lot of different ways that we like to say the derivative. And one of them is that if we write the function as f of x, then often we'll, so this is the function. Uh, then often we'll write the derivative as f prime of x, and I've already said that. But sometimes we write the function as y instead of f of x, and in that case we could write y prime as the derivative. Uh, sometimes we write the function as y, and instead of writing the derivative as y prime, we might write it this way, as dy over dx. And if you think of dy as a very small change in y, and dx as a very small change in x, that makes some sense because we're saying the rise over the run very, very close to a point. Okay, so a very, a slope 
uh, that's calculated very close to a point. Okay, so that's dy over dx. Or we could say that it's, uh, we could write it as f of x. So I could say that this is dy, but y in this case is f of x over dx. And all four of these things mean the exact same thing to me. This says take the derivative of the function f of x. This says take the derivative of the function y. Take the derivative of the function y. Take the derivative of the function f of x. So we have four different ways to write take the derivative of something or the derivative of the function. So you just need to be familiar with all four of these and what they all mean uh, before we get started actually taking some derivatives.